Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your continued support. Now, there is an audit report from the Auditor General, Nancy Gadongo, raising an alarm about a 5 billion scandal that is looming from the NCBA. And this is a scandal that is on the side of Parastatal, according to the Auditor General. And I want us to go through what exactly are his findings, because on reportages on corruption, sometimes it's good to be factual and, of course, do direct reporting. And so I want to look at what um, the Auditor General is raising, the queries is raising. Then you can also look at interpretation of this um, in relation to the image of Ruto's regime. Kindly subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and also like our video. I want to continue thanking you guys for your support. According to the audit report, the Auditor General is saying that National Serious and Produce Board, the parcels of land that are distributed across the country, parcels of land that belong to NCBA, were illegally required, illegally secured, and shared by individuals, powerful individuals and entities for commercial gains. And as you know, NCBA is a parastatal, is a government parastatal. And what it holds, or the lands that it holds, that belongs to them is maybe for expansion, maybe for future projects, but they are not supposed to be sold. Then uh, the Auditor General is saying that no records were provided to indicate the effort made by NCB to NCPB to recover these parcels of lands. And she actually warned the government that they risk losing billions of shillings if the encroachment isn't curbed and accused persons arrested. According to her, is that there are powerful individuals, <coughs> sorry, powerful individuals from the, of course, within the National Produce Board Management that are actually benefiting from this encroachment and they have got actually plucked land that belonged to government, putting up structures. And the next uh, expose is going to give you, rather the next bit, revelation is going to give you what exactly, how exactly this was, was executed because I've, I've tried to go through the report, the full report that is supposed to, to be tabled in parliament next week. Now, this is what they're saying. The areas, um, the NCB, uh, the, N, the National Serious and Produce Board areas that are affected, counties that are affected, are Bungoma, Nakuru, Kisi, and Kericho. With private entities taking over, they have gone to an extent of even fencing and even leasing off the land to private proprietors illegally or rather regularly. So this is government property being sold to individuals. And this is what it says. In Bungoma, the silos, um, the land next to the silo was leased to a garage operator, while in Kisi, the individuals reportedly put up a structure on its hectares or 0 0.6 hectares and blocks of land respectively. They built up structures in the land in Kese. The individuals who did that encroachment, and let me tell you, if, if you've been in this country, if there is one of the most difficult property to take to Nyakwa is a property that belongs to the government. Uneza nyanganya civilian hapa inje. You can do any other banky business and snatch a property from a civilian here. But government property is not very easy. I remember one time when Atuli was making a, a joke, and he, in fact it was very serious when he was saying that 
in his home in Kajiado, when he when government says that that land is government land and he needs to leave it, he will not even start arguing, but will look for how he can relocate and get another place, because that's not everything that belongs to government is not something that you cannot start putting up a negotiation. Now that is in Kisi and Bungoma. Now in Nakuru, um, yes, in Kericho, the land was put up and rentals built, private individuals built rentals in that same land that belonged to the NCB. This was under the watch of uh, the same. Actually, as I say, that Gadung also claimed that permanent houses were built on Kericho NCB, NCPB, institutions land, with the owners having allotment letters thereafter claiming legal ownership of the land. <laughs> uh, I've had a privilege of, um, within Nairobi here, to go through this process of acquisition of land. And within Nairobi, no one, it's very difficult to get the title deed. If you ask people, it's very difficult. What you can easily get is an allotment letter. And when you lease, when someone leases a land for you in Nairobi, you're normally advised that you put up temporary structures because if that government belongs, if that land belongs to the government, you don't know when they will wake up, when a ministerial project will emerge, and they will be in need of their land. And within, without even negotiating with you, they will be repossessing it. So for you to see, uh, and when I was reading this report, that someone built a permanent structure in a land that belonged to a parastatal, then that told that tells you that the negotiation was above board, or he had a lot of confidence. If that was an investment, he had a lot of confidence on what this is actually talking about. Now, the report has raised concern about the financial situation, quoting its liabilities, which is currently standing at 19.25 uh, billion, and it dents image of the government in terms of what exactly is happening. Now, let me tell you people, um, this, this do not need magical science. If you've been in this country and follow corruption scandals that have been, uh, uh, that have been, that have emerged even during William, even Uhuru Kenyatta's reign, they've normally, uh, uh, like some line of, um, some denominator, some identity or rather similarity in terms of those kind of that, it, it starts, it stems from a, a, a ministry, but it goes into parastatals. Think of any, think of the dam scandal, even around that can more rare. If you look at it, you will, okay, some of the report, of course, there was treasury and irrigation ministry involved, um, the names appearing, but there was also parastatal. <laughs> involved. So to William Ruto, this and, and of course he's been in government and he understands very well that for the Kenyan people, where the money gets lost is not in the ministry. It's not it's not exclusively in the ministry. The money the ministry is just the paperwork and, and the Kizungu ya Kufrem project, you're going to do this here, do analysis, evaluation financing and, and you know and signatures but the real place if government for example wants to do something like dams the ministry of uh, irrigation is not going to construct dams they were going to give it a trust at all mostly so some of these things you'll actually realize that william Ruto must be very wary of prostatals and agencies that work below the ministers because there is, this is where the debt business is done. You know, the people there are not in elective posts. So their post, they, they loot and run away. That's why I, when you follow the story of Waluke, I am one person that do not appreciate those who push that Waluke needs to be released unconditionally. I don't think that's it because corruption is a vice in this country. Even though I also agree, that there should be no selective application of the law. But the quest for non-selective application of the law should not really mean that we do not deal with matters at hand. 
We need to deal with matters at hand. And corruption is one of the things that even former President Uhuru Kenyatta announced and saying that, look here, we are losing two billion per day going in the pockets, individual pockets. This is a vice that if we can even fix, uh, we will not find ourselves. It, it will really help us solve, uh, get um, uh, money to solve many other problems that are affecting Kenya. So this is it. But it's, it's coming at a critical time. Remember, when William Ruto was coming into government, he came into government amidst a very heated um, character assassination on the matters of his previous record uh, with corruption and the other matters that were touching on, um, you know, the things that were really on his face. And when he forms government, one of the things that he would not really want to come to rather to affect even to be associated with his government is the issue of corruption. Because if that's carried to the next election and it's, 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 it's packaged well, messaged well to mean that the government is failing because of corruption, I can tell you that a re-election is going to be a big hurdle. And we might get to a record of first president to serve one term. I've always, I've always said that, and of course, it's something that is there. So... This is why these issues of corruption, when, when they come, um, uh, even though I appreciate and I acknowledge that some of these, like this one for SCA is not, did not start with Ruto's government. But there is no excuse of saying it, it started back so I can't deal with it. If you're the person now who is in charge, you must deal with it now, even though it did not start now. Ruto's government is just about 50 days. But with the such coming, it gives Kenyans an idea to know how, where exactly is your position or are you really committed to fight it? And these are the four aspects that I see. It actually dents the image of government because these transactions, they may have happened back, but the fact that Ruto is coming into office and things are not uh, yet fine, people are looking for what they can punch holes on. And it provides a very good fodder for opposition agenda. This report will be in Parliament next week. I've just got it in one of the um, newspapers. And when it will go to Parliament, because it's supposed to be deliberated by Public Accounts Committee, I think, I think Public Accounts, yes, Public Accounts Committee Park, that I think is chaired by Mbadi or Babu, if I'm not wrong. I think it's Mbadi. So um, it, it, will be, it will be blown out. The media might be allowed to carry it, sensationalized, and emotions inject on it before you know it's actually a punch it's it, it's come it, it's denting the image of government and people will be calling on Ruto to individually to individually take uh, take responsibility or rather to act on this so it provides us a fodder and and you know opposition politics thrives on what government is not doing right so when government is not getting something right they will pick this and run with it and it's destabilizing the status quo. Th these are people who might have benefited from it. Even though, interestingly, I saw a tweet by Chirge saying state capture fights back. Now, this is the other forms of state. This is the other form of state capture. <laughs> this is the other form of state capture. What uh, William Root and Gadi Gashagwa envisioned as uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's um, business uh, mutilation to be seen as the state capture. But this is now showing the real state capture. That is not just what is in the mainstream. At Hapa Chini and the other prostatus, there are a lot of things that are, that are emerging. And it's a fodder that William Root and Regatta Geshago, maybe it's something for them to bite and look at how they can handle it. And if you realize the issues of state capture seems to have uh, gone down, the, con the conversations about state capture seems to have gone down. We may have to look at that. Why do you think they're changing tactic and they're dropping it? It's advisable because we kept on insisting here that state capture is just an English, but fighting cartels and, and all that, it's a total, it's a toll order. It's a difference, um, just overhauling the whole country. And it had a ripple effect. In fact, in simple terms, it fights back. And I think this time round, because if Ruto wanted to do with it, and in fact, if you want to handle some of these corruption scandals, is don't just take it to media, just work silently. But when you want to do things to please Kenyans, you want to make decisions and decisions that can be taken by the newspaper editors and 
and the television and, and the TV produ and, and the mainstream producers, then you, you simply lose the gap because at that moment you are actually threatening the careers and, 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 and opportunities of other people. And these people will always find their way, even if they can't handle through the political uh, negotiations or uh, interventions, they might even now go and bribe their way through the court. And of course, we know our judicial uh, system uh, is not that much uh, tight. It's actually prone to some manipulation as in the past. So ladies and gentlemen, that's my word. I don't want to take on Ruta's government having to contend with the corruption scandal 50 days after coming into office. What do you, what do you, look, what do you make of that? It's something that, um, what kind of image it, it portrays for them?